welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Lorkey. Hi, I'm Shireen Tan. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to taste some Vermentinos from all around the world. Is that so? Yes. <laughs> Actually from California, from Sardinia. So, if you could better wine. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who don't know, Vermentino, uh, a variety that you'll find in the south of France and in Italy, the Mediterranean part of Italy, probably most famous in Sardinia. Uh, it's also called Roule in the south of France, uh, Pigato, Favorita, and Piemonte. Am I missing any other terms? No, I think there's a lot more. Yeah, there's a lot more. Yeah. It's it's a grape that actually makes just wonderful food friendly daily wines, right? You like the grape a lot. Yeah, I like it very much. Uh, most of the time, if I go to an Italian restaurant and when I look at a wine list and if I see Vermentino by, by the glass, I would almost 100% pick Vermentino because it just doesn't disappoint. Yeah. I think in, in general, it's most like if you, you're always going to, uh, good producers in Sardinia, you're going to get pretty decent Vermentino, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So let's taste some. Uh, I got some of these because I judged in the first, inter just got back from the first international Vermentino competition in Cagliari, Sardinia. I went to a regional competition from the same organization a couple year ago, years ago. We were both there. Mm -hmm. Tasted a lot of Vermentinos. Uh, so let's get started, shall we? Let's go for it. All right. <laughs> we're going to taste it. First of all, we have these cool glasses. Look at these cool glasses from the that. company Italasse. Yeah. Italasse. <laughs> I think that's the name of it. The stem is really thin. Almost like Zalto. Yeah, almost like Zalto. Yeah, thin. I think they're really cool. We don't have any affiliation with them, but uh, we use these at the competition. I, I asked if we could, could take a few home. We travel full time, and I, yeah. it made it. All, they made it all the way across the Adriatic without breaking. So I was happy about that. <laughs> Let's get. So this is this is dishwasher safe, right? I'm guessing. I, I think I don't know. I just like the shape. So I took. <laughs> Let's get started. The first wine we have is uh, the Consorzio San Michele Superbia. Uh, Vermentino di Galota Superiore 2018. We visited this estate a few years ago, remember? Yeah, I, and on the very first day when we did uh, a tasting of a lot of Vermentino wine, this was one of the two or three wines that really stood out to me. Yeah, uh, and just so you know, uh, Vermentino di Galota is the only DOCG in Sardinia. For those of you who don't know, uh, those these are Appalachian yeah. terminology for Italy. You have IGT at the bottom, DOC in the middle, DOCG at the top. It's supposed to mean some of the highest and most uh, most representative mm -hmm. wines of Italy. So let's get started into this. Uh, let's give this a smell here. We're, this isn't really a scoring episode. We're just going to kind of talk about the grape, the flavors you're going to see, and yeah. kind of like this, the differences you're going to see in some new world versus old world Vermentino. I think it's a good idea because it gives you a different expression of one grape. So for this, it's very generous on the nose. Yes. It's very yogurt -y, um, very sweet melon note. Uh, for those of you that don't, and you probably you probably can can you uh, agree with this too? If you're in Sardinia on holiday, you're gonna get Vermentino really easily. The Vermentino di Sardinia Appalachian DOC, and then is a little bit less uh, yogurty. Yeah. Usually Vermentino di Galota, the DOCG has more yogurt notes like this. Is that so. is that because they tend to do more silly over there in Batunage? I can't. I couldn't okay. tell you. I'm, I'm just wondering. I'm guessing because it's supposed to be higher quality grapes, so they can probably take the silly. I'm guessing. Okay. Um, 2018, I know, wasn't a great vintage in Sardinia. They actually had uh, rain and some hail <laughs> in right. August. So, to me, this is very typical Vermentino of Sardinia flavors. Yeah, there's also like a little bit of this like sea breeze salinity, which I really like. Even on the nose as well, you get this impression of saltiness. Mm. A lot of saltiness, pineapple, uh, just <laughs> pineapple, yellow peach. Almost has uh, Vermentinos from Sardinia have almost these sage type notes. For me, sage kind of like Mediterranean brush. It's quite phenolic on the finish. I'm not expecting that. What do you think of this one? We've written about the fifteen before, actually. Um, interesting that you said it was there was hill and it was a wetter vintage. It feels like it's more generous, actually. Mm -hmm. Um. Much more fruit, and I wonder what it has to do with this glass with the broader base, right? The wine feels pretty tannic on the finish and a little bit bitter. Mm. I like this wine a lot. I think it's a it's a almost like a full bodied white wine, but I do think you need food with that. What kind of food? This is exact, what kind of food do you think these kind of wines? I are? I white fish for okay. sure, and I hate to cheat, but most of the time actually roast chicken and a big white wine tend to go very well for me. Mm, okay, uh, I think this is. 
still super high quality I wine. So, yeah. I, not that this is a scoring episode, but I definitely see this type of wine getting in the high 80s, 90s type of range. I think this could be in the range of 90s. This is on the higher end of Vermentino. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on. So, so we have kind of the traditional Vermentinos, although I, I like the ones from France a lot too. Now we're moving on to, uh, which one do you want to move on, Oregon or California? I should do Oregon first. Okay. Or we got this, uh, the Troon Vineyard, the Applegate Valley Vermentino 2018. These are all the same vintages, which is kind of cool. Oregon, a region, uh, a state in the U.S. Uh, known for Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, and Chardonnay. But this producer in the south of Oregon is working with a lot of Rhone grapes and then obviously Vermentino. Uh, biodynamic farming. Uh -huh. fun. I was going to ask this one to you. Yes. <laughs> you can smell it. Yes, yeah. This is the one I talked with the Polish winemaker there about I here. See. So let's give this a smell here. When you say spontaneous fermentation, what kind of nose does that? Mean? I don't. I don't think there's a specific smell of spontaneous fermentation. But when you smell something that's a little bit less precise, like perhaps you can kind of sense that that's a little bit of volatile aromas, right? I tend to think that fermentation was stuck or fermentation took a little bit longer. So you do get a little bit of off, like so-called volatile aromas, but they're not necessarily bad smelling. It's just an indication for me. For those of you that are not wine geeks. It would be hard to pick up on some of this stuff. Yeah, Just yeah. know it's going to smell. Whether you little, enjoy it's it going to smell a yeah. little bit different. But I think I think it's a little bit of BS as well. When some people think that oh, you can smell the difference between like spontaneous and inoculated fermentation. That's just. <sighs> so, anyways, this is definitely this to me. If I was tasting blind, oh, the alcohol is much lower. 12, 9, right. 14, 5, Much more cooler yeah. fruit. Not as yeah, much I pineapple. Agree. More kind of white. Pear, uh, white peach. Mm -hmm. I still get a little bit of this lininess I associate yeah, I with liminous. Vermentino. But the first thing that I got was yeasty. It's a little bit yeasty. Does it bother like you? Cheesy. No, it's just that immediately I thought it was a spontaneous fermentation. That's all. It just definitely smells like it's going to taste a little bit more slimmer. A little bit hard to guess that this was Vermentino on the nose, but mm -hmm. on the palate, you, you get the peachiness, the melon note. Zing. Salty as well, actually. Very salty, zingy acidity. I like that zinginess. Uh, question. So in Oregon, uh, I actually been to the South of Oregon. I haven't been to Troon Winery. I've been to the South of Oregon, where these wines are from. But uh, salmon is very common there. Could you see that going with salmon? Yeah, I can. Smoked salmon. Yeah, I can. I can. Uh, do you? What are you thinking about this wine? Are you enjoying it? It's got, it's got some pretty big scores, critic wise. Um, I wasn't so into the nose because the nose was kind of. I just couldn't tell what wine it is, but on the palate, it's really nice. It's Nina's. It's got a very nice, like salty, sweet finish as well. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the first Vermentino mm -hmm. from Galura is much more classic to me and more precise. But this actually makes me. This is a very drinkable wine. It's very enjoyable. Yeah. It's quite slim and it's surprising. A Vermentino, it's it's usually a hot weather grape. That's why uh, people in the Mediterranean like it keeps a city. But from a cooler area, again, like Oregon, I, I do think surprisingly pretty good. You want to move on? Sure, please. Let's move on to the next one here. So totally different styles. We're moving to another hot area of America. The Tablas Creek Vineyard 2018 Vermentino. From Paso Robles. I see. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who don't know, Tablas Creek is the sister winery to the legendary Chateau, uh, owned by the family parents, Chateau Beaucastel in uh, the Rhone. Winery we were just at last year that you oh. love. <laughs> one, of the, one of the most memorable wines we had last year, at, for me personally, mm -hmm. was the Chateau Beaucastel Roussan uh, Viedin. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> one, oh, actually, that was one of the best white wines I've had in my life. I would say. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, this. You know what? Going it's back, so I have tannins from this wine a little bit. I can't. I don't know if it's no, that one or it's still. I, I had quite a lot of phenolic bite and tannins from the first one, not the second one. So anyway, this had a screw cap. It's so funny. You want me to tell you a funny story? I gave a master class to some sommeliers in Sardinia. Uh, only presented one wine. I presented an American wine. I'm familiar with the area and everything. And I picked the wrong vintage. We had 17, 18. Ha <laughs> 17 was not as <laughs> Funny. No, no, I'm not making fun of you. I think it's very true that when there, there is vintage variation, no matter how reputable you are and what a good producer you are, there will always be vintage variation, which is a good indication. So this is uh, biodynamic farming, spontaneous fermentation mm -hmm. as well. This smells more like fermentino. Yeah, exactly. What do you See, think? So, so back to the point that like, can you really smell inoculated of spontaneous fermentation? No, like no. this is perfectly clean and nice. 
Actually, I think it's a little bit of reduction. Really? In a nice way. It's a little bit reduced. Okay. I do think that it will taste a little bit better in a while. Lots of uh, lots of pineapple notes again. I mm-hmm. think kind of a mix between like a green mango type note, a little yeah, bit of lightiness, yogurt. Definitely this like chalky clay notes on the nose, which, which is why I thought it this was. This kind of reminds me of a uh, white wine from the south of Spain. Yes, I hundred percent agree with you. Almost like a yes. Geralu, I always pronounce the grape mm-hmm. from you know the grape yeah. that's used in cava, uh, the clayiness. It's because I said clay and you thought of that, right? Yeah, 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 I think that's yeah, yeah, oh, You're probably right. And that's, but it's true. That's no, no. what happens in wine tasting a lot. It's all built on association. But it's fun. So, it's really yeah. fun to just have this like sort of conversation to um, back and forth. Mm-hmm. No, I have a lot to spit there. So maybe you have to swallow. Okay. What do you think of the wine? Mm, love the nose. Palette is a little bit close on me right now. Mm-hmm. I still like it a lot. Closer to Vermentino. But... It's also less unctuous than the other two, the first two. And for me, one of the things that I like about Vermentino is the palette. It's like a little bit oily. Yeah, it's exactly. It's so, less so. It's so funny because this is more similar Vermentino flavors. Mm-hmm. If I had to put it this way, like this is Vermentino, what kind of I expect when I drink the grape. Uh, this is much slimmer, almost Pinot Gris-like mm-hmm. for me, like French-style Pinot Gris. This has the flavors, but it's kind of in between in body. It doesn't have... Uh, the big, the big shoulders like this mm-hmm. one. It's not as slim as this one. What's the alcohol here? Oh, uh, thirteen. So again, here we have fourteen, five, thirteen, twelve point nine. Wow. So the alcohol lines up. Um, I think the Tablas Creek is my favorite. Really? Yeah. Why? Really, really balanced. Like I said, I think it's just a little bit reduced right now, but really balanced. Very, very nice flavor. It's food, just so balanced. Food pairings with this bad boy. I think it's all about the same. Mm. Maybe, maybe something can be fun. What's that? Uh, bacalao? Oh yeah, from Portugal. It so, might be a little bit bitter on the finish, though. Imagine bacalao. So you know, this is what this is all about. I think Vermentino is one of the great Italian house whites mm-hmm. out there. Uh, I think you put it best, and I always I'm gonna cap you. I, I will always remember one time you said, "I love Italian white wines from indigenous grapes because the wines are so weird." Yeah. And not in a bad way, they're just unique yeah. fla- unique flavors, right? Yeah, for me, most of the time when I go to restaurants, since I was quite young, I would always order wines that I don't know uh-huh. um, by the glass because it's always a new experience for indigenous varieties. Yeah, so check these out. Check out Vermentino. Uh, I'll put I'll put some of the links up in the description box. I think it's a fantastic, uh, mm-hmm. so fantastic white wine, wines that you can just sip on all day during yeah. the hot summer days. Yeah, to add on to that also, I think Vermentino, even when it's made fresh, and it's simple and easy way there's just something more to it than Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay because Vermentino like I said it's a little bit unctuous it's quite generous it's a bit salty as well so I really oh so check it out and good job I mean good job by, the, by all three wineries here I think the wines were all good I, I, I wouldn't and I know for a fact that they've all got big scores but all these wines are like high 80s like low 90s type of wine so uh, keep it up check out Vermentino and if you like this video Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Xavier Wine Travel. We'll see you at the next episode. Ah. This is really good.